Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and in this video I'm going to look back to Game Week 20 where mistakes were made, big mistakes, and look forward to Game Week 21 and see what new mistakes I can try and do then. Uh, I've not been quite so well this week and all I've managed to do all day is just knock up these two videos which is ridiculous for a day's work. <laughs> but I had the day off to be fair. I had a day's holiday today so I thought I'd just take it easy do these uh, two vids. So, um, sorry if my uh, voice is a bit off and my breathing seems a bit worse than normal. Let's have a look at how Game Week 20 went. So the Midnight Mule FPL League top scorer this week was Benzema Blundor, which is Sam Rancord, with a 105 points, which was very impressive. Something very interesting about this team, they played the triple captain, only got an extra 8 points for that. But there are no special standout players here. Mares 19 points, Kuliseski 11, Rashford 12, Odegaard 9, Trippier 9, Kepa 10, Kane 7 and then Harlan got 8 but Kane 24. None of those players we should be surprised got quite a good score. So that's amazing I think, <laughs> over 100 points and that's right and Koulibaly came on for 12 minutes and got one point. If that hadn't have happened then Bueno would have come off the bench so would have got even more points. So, very well done. I think that's a very good score. Oh, and I wanted to show you this. Back in game week 14, might not be able to see this, their, their rank was 3.1 million. And now, just seven game weeks later, they're around the 500,000 mark. So, it really only takes a few weeks. With a few green arrows, you can just build up and up and up. So, if it was now game week 30 and you're at 3 million you can still be in the top half million or better by the end of the season. But it's not game week 30, we're about to have game week 21. So you've got plenty of time to mess up, make more mistakes and still have a good run at some point. So I'm I'm a long way down, I'm near the 2 million mark, but I'm, I'm not scared, I'll still be all right. <laughs> so top of our league is Jacob Eriksson with Skog's Galanton IF, currently on 1283 points. This is their team. Let's see, we had Harland captain, got 16 in total. Rashford 12, Tony 9, Kane 7, De Bruyne 5, Trippier 9, Kepa 10. So anyone who managed to keep Kepa rather than change for Edison, well done. That was definitely a, a keeper worth keeping. Uh, I got rid of Kepa in the end because I just didn't trust Chelsea and I really wanted a double game week player. So that was very expensive for me. But we'll look at my team next. No mistakes made regarding the bench, so couldn't have played a better team if you tried, and they're still top of our very coveted league. As for myself, I'm down in 59th on 11-23. Uh, I got 72 points. So my video last week, what I proposed doing was swapping Sterling, who was injured for De Bruyne. So that was got me five points, but I did have two free transfers. But I think I did the video on about the Tuesday, because I knew I was busy all week, didn't have any other chance to do it. By the time it got to the deadline, I talked myself into getting Dirty and Perisic and Edison for uh, Cancelo, Kepa and James who wasn't playing. Because just the lure of having an extra three double game week players and there's a chance that Dirty and Perisic could have got an attacking return. Very unlikely to get a clean sheet, but an attacking return was possible. So I took that hit and that was a, that was a massive mistake. Uh, but I'll show you the details on that later. But now I'm stuck with two defenders from a team that is pretty rubbish defensively. And on the bench, Martinelli Ward got two, Bueno six and Dunk five. And had I not got the two Tottenham boys, then Bueno is a defender that I would have played. So I was getting hit all over the place. That, that was not... <laughs> it was a funny week. So 72 points. Game week rank was just outside the 2 million. So overall, I'm just inside the 2 million. Uh, another red arrow. I thought I was going to get a green arrow this week, but to be fair, when I said that, that was on the Tuesday with my original plan, and had I stuck to that, I would have got a green arrow. Uh, so something I've learned, useful tip for you, certainly true for me, if you make a decision late on in the game week, it rarely pays off. It's nearly always a bad idea. If you can form your ideas sometime before the end of the game week, then that certainly that works best for me. Knee jerking right at the end because you hear a bit of news or you have a sudden idea, 
for me that just doesn't work and this is a good example of that so i'm now 33 points from 1 million only six points in front of 2 million so maybe our I managed to go over the 2 million mark this week and start heading towards the 3 million. <laughs> this chart's from Live FPL, by the way. That's why I've got their name at the top. 445 subscribers. Thank you very much for watching my misery and seeing how well I'm doing. So, Content Creators League. This is on FPL Game Week. If you go to the website, you'd see where you appear. We have a new leader with Ben Krellin. And if you're on Twitter, he's totally worth following. He puts a lot of work into predicting when there could be double game weeks in the future and blank game weeks and even though he gets a lot of his speculation wrong it's still very interesting for a lot of us to work out what we would do if he is right so we just had announced the last two or three hours that man united and leader can have a double game week in 22 and that's something that ben predicted several weeks ago so top guy and i'm sure none of us regret the fact that he's the top of this league which means ross has moved down into second fpl raptor so it'd be interesting to see, is he going to continue the slide or will he be able to get his place back as number one? Also in the top five is Harry. reason I'm mentioning Harry, reason I mention these three, is there are three that I follow and I, I certainly watch the videos of uh, Raptor and Harry. I'm all the way on the second page down in 54th, and look at that. And also now falling into uh, the second page is FPL Focal. He's an interesting guy to listen to. He has some good ideas. He was number one, I think it was last season at one point for a few weeks. So he's uh, he's top, top with his tips, as are Harry and Ross. But he's <laughs> rather embarrassing for him. He's on the same page as me at the moment. So transfers, I said I'd say about this. So what I like to do with my transfers is reckon I've got four weeks to pay them back. So I'm very happy to take hits. Um, very happy yeah it makes me very happy to take hits and change my team around I just need to think over the four weeks was it worth it so I track these if you look at previous videos you'll see this is what I've done so I took out Kames Kames who's Kames I took out Kepa, James Cancelo and Sterling and I brought in Edison, Perisic, Doherty and De Bruyne and before I did this that is before a ball was kicked this looked like a potentially good idea to me because Perisic and Doherty could get a lot of points. Obviously, Cancel and Edison kind of cancel each other out. But I had three Man City players, so that's why I did it. If I just done Perisic and Doherty for James and Cancelo, that wouldn't have been anywhere near as bad, of course. So the players I took out got 11 points. The players I brought in got 10 points. But that includes De Bruyne. I was always going to bring in De Bruyne for Sterling because Sterling was out. I had two free transfers. So I was always going to get that five points. So I brought in for a cost of eight, Edison, Perisic and Doherty who got five and I lost Kepa and Cancelo who got 11. So uh, five, 11, that's six points. Plus it cost me eight, so that's 14 points. But if I hadn't have done that transfer, then Bueno would have paid, so that's 20 points. So my late decision to do this craziness just to get some more double game week has cost me 20 points. And that's quite, that's quite a lot of points, I think. That would have made a fair difference and I would have got the green arrow. But it's okay. These things happen. I've got a long way to go yet. So we track these over the next four weeks to see how I do. I'm almost certainly going to drop Perisic and Doherty in game week 22. So they're not be getting any more points past this game week 21. But we'll see how it goes. So at the moment, I'm minus nine for doing this move. So possible transfer for this week. I probably almost certainly won't make a transfer. But I am intending to get rid of Martial. I'm aware he's up for a double game week next week. But I would rather have Shaw. My defence is quite shocking. And loads of people have Shaw. And I should really have him. So I'm intending to get rid of Martial and get Shaw at the back. Because I already have three Man United players. So now that we know who the doubles against and its leads. This week I could... Get rid of Martial, who's probably not going to play. But if he does, he probably won't get 90 minutes. And it is a way to Arsenal. I could bring in Bamford, Leeds at home to Brentford. Or Notto, who's again at home to Brentford, of course. And they both have a double game week next week. So short term, I think that could be a good move. Otherwise, Tony's a popular choice. He would be a bit of a shield. He's. It means all the time Tony keeps getting these seven, eight, nine pointers. I won't be getting hurt by the fact that I don't have him. 
Tony's the least likely of those three, but any of those three are possible. And I probably won't decide until shortly before the deadline tomorrow. The captain, Harland. But this is probably going to be the last game week for a few game weeks. Well, it will be Harland because next week United have got a double game week and I'll probably do Fernandes or Rashford. The week after, of course, Arsenal have got a double game week. I'll serve Man City. So it may be an Arsenal person I go for there or it may be a Man City person. But a few weeks ago, I was thinking Harland will always be my captain. Now I'm less sure of that. And my vice captain, I'm going to go for Trippier. Obviously, I'm expecting Harland to play. But if he doesn't, Trips keeps getting a solid score, so he could be the vice captain. So the way my team's lining up, I'm expecting it to line up, is Edison in goal. So Man City at home to Wolves. Other Man City players, I've got De Bruyne and Haaland. This is the game I'm expecting to get my most points from. I've got Trippier in defence away to Palace. My other Newcastle player is Almiron. He's in midfield, of course. Not expecting a Northlock from there. Trippier has got a reasonable chance of a return. Almiron, good player, but he's not done much for a few weeks. And then I'm going to play the two Spurs defenders. They're away to Fulham. I'm not expecting a clean sheet off them, but there's a chance they get an attacking return. I don't know which one's more likely to start, which one's going to get them more minutes. They could both get a return. They could both get absolutely trashed. But I've got them now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make myself suffer for a second week. And then the Arsenal Man United game, I have Rashford, Fernandez, Martinelli, and Ketia. It's quite plausible they'll all get one or two points each. Equally, they could all get seven, eight, nine points each. So those four players might be worth less than 10 or over 30. And any of those scores wouldn't be that surprising. So I'm kind of expecting to probably get a red arrow this week because I suspect other people's squads are set up more favourably. This doesn't look great for this one week. But we'll see how it goes. A small red arrow is certainly better than a big red arrow. And on the bench, I've got Martial, who's flagged at the moment, Dunk and Bueno. That's my current plan for game week 21. And the funny thing is, every game week, shortly before the game week, I'm really excited and happy about the game week and got all these expectations of this, that and the other might happen. And it's, it's really good. And then during the game week, of course, I get highs and lows. And at the end of the game week, Normally, certainly at the moment, it's like, oh yeah, that wasn't so good. <laughs> then after a few days, all those negative emotions are forgotten and I'm hyped up again and ready for the next game week because it might be good. So I hope you have a good game week. 21, thank you very much for watching this. Bye. <laughs>